I just wanted to start out by saying thank you to everyone who took the time to listen to my video. Um, this appeared in the hills of Kentucky. It was the story of Robert Ray Honeycutt, who had gone missing um, in 2009 from Knott County. I did that video a little bit differently. I didn't focus so much on um, the statistics about him as far as height and weight and stuff like that because I could not find him listed anywhere on any missing persons websites. And I later figured out why. It's because he had been declared legally dead. So he he's not considered a missing person at this point. I think the case has been closed in the eyes of law enforcement, as I had said in that video. But I just wanted to kind of clear that up. I focused a little bit more on the circumstances surrounding the night that he was last seen. But I, I just wanted to say thanks to everybody who watch that video and I do want to continue to focus on missing men in and around Eastern Kentucky for this next couple of videos because there's so many. This is about Randy Lee Sellers. He went missing August the 16th 1980 from Kenton County, Kentucky. Um, he was white his birth, date of birth was September the 6th, 1962. He was 17 when he went missing. He weighed, he was 5 foot 9 and weighed 150 pounds. He was last seen wearing a black shirt, blue jeans, and work shoes. Um, he had brown hair and hazel eyes. Randy had a birthmark on the crown of his head a scar above his left eye and a surgical scar on his right knee. He has a scar on his left elbow from an old fracture and he has a crooked letter R tattooed on his forearm. Randy wore a beard and at the time of his disappearance four of his teeth had apparently not erupted by the time he went missing. I guess they mean his wisdom teeth had not come in yet. Um, the details of his disappearance. Randy was picked up in Kenton County. Randy was picked up by Kenton County Police Department officers on August 15th, 1980. He got into a fist fight with another individual at the Kenton County Fair in Independence, Kentucky and charged with disorderly conduct and public intoxication. The officers believed he was under the influence of drugs, and according to the police, Randy struck one of them after he was put into the squad car. The police dropped Randy off one mile from his family's home in Vassalia, Kentucky. Some reports stated that Randy provided unclear directions to his home and others claim that the officers dropped him off at the location as a favor. He never arrived home that evening and has not been seen again. Authorities initially believed Randy had drowned. Footprints near the Licking River matched a set of hiking boots owned by one of his relatives, and there were marks indicating someone had slipped and fallen into the water. A search of the river turned up no evidence. However, investigators now believe the footprints were left by people searching for Randy. Donald Leroy Evans, a former drifter sentenced to death for the murder of a young child in Mississippi, claimed he picked up Randy along Kentucky 177 and drove him to Kincaid Lake State Park in Pendleton County. They drank beer at the park, and then Evans shot Randy in the back of the head and buried his body in a shallow grave at the park. Evans also claimed he was responsible for additional unsolved cases, including the death of Kimberly Don McClaskey, who was 17 when she disappeared in 1983. Her skeletal remains were found in 1989, but not conclusively identified 
until 2006. Authorities searched Kincaid Lake State Park for Randy's body multiple times, but nothing has been located. Evans has never been charged in with connection with either case, and police are not sure if he was involved. They called his claims credible. However, he drew a crude map of the park, and the park is also near where Randy's mother was visiting a friend that night. His mother believes Randy hitched a ride with Evans to the park in hopes of coming to see her. Investigators have also heard tips that officers with the Kenton County Police Department were involved in Randy's disappearance. Each time they receive any tips implicating the department, they ask the Kentucky State Police to investigate it. So far, the State Police have deemed these tips non-credible. I looked up this um, Donald Leroy Evans who had admitted to or who confessed to picking this boy up and taking him to Kincaid State Park and murdering him and burying him, even though that park has been searched many times. I tried to find as much as I could about this man because I wanted to see what his, who his victims were. And for the most part, what I can find is that he seems to target women. I, I suppose it's possible that on a dark night, if he was driving along and this young man was walking, he may have seen this as an opportunity. He may have thought that this Randy Sellers was a girl because um, he did have long hair, not, not real long, but, you know, shoulder length. And at night, he may have mistaken him for a woman because he did have somewhat long hair, the way that boys wore their hair at that time. And, But it's also possible that this man had absolutely nothing to do with this and that the police are lying about what took place that night. Um, I find it kind of somewhat hard to believe I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt by saying, well, it's possible that they didn't want him to get into any trouble. So instead of taking him right up to his door, they just set him out near his home. But the boots that he, or the, the boots that, the boot print that was found was not matching what he had on that night. So it was a different kind of boot, a different boot print. I don't think that he went into the water, um, Maybe the police wanted people to just go with that angle and say, okay, this is what happened to him. But that doesn't explain what happened to his body because eventually he would have washed up someplace, you know. But this Donald Evans, he was convicted for the murder of a 10-year-old child. And he has confessed to killing more than 60 people in 20 states. Most of the murders and rapes took place at rest stops and public parks. The police were skepti skeptical of his claims, but many of his descriptions were perfect matches of unsolved cases across Florida and Illinois. He was tried and convicted for the rape, kidnapping, and strangulation of a 10-year-old girl. Oh, it's possible that this man may have just told this. He, makes, he gives no reason as to why he would have just shot this young man in the back of the head unless he was just some type of thrill killer. And he was claiming to get some thrill out of it. But if you look at the people that he claimed to have murdered or that he was associated with um, murdering a child, um, Donald, Lee, Donald Leroy Evans was sentenced to death in the murder of a young child. Now, the other person he claims to have killed was this Randy, who was a 17-year-old boy. And then he also claims to have murdered a 17-year-old girl. Now, most serial killers have a type. If you look at the patterns, you look at, um, well, of course, we can all name the big ones. Jeffrey Dahmer, 
he went for young, vulnerable gay men who he would pick up in bars and such. Um, and the list goes on. There's so many to name. I could name them all for for hours, but they all seem to have a top, you know. Um, and sometimes they may murder someone out of uh, convenience that because or inconvenience because they want rid of that person in order to get to their real target. But for the most part, they don't. A serial killer would not pick a man and then pick a woman and then pick a child, you know? So I, I don't know if his uh, story really has anything to do with it. I would... I would... Be, I would be shocked if the police were not involved. This was this town. They say this town no longer exists. After a, um, it was a very small town, and I guess it was incorporated into the county, or just the city was dissolved, or whatever. But um, it was a small town, probably four or five police officers in the whole town. And um, it's not unheard of, people. And, and I'm not here to badmouth the police. I support the police, and I don't. I'm not here to... Um, but there's always a bad apple in every bunch, you know? A bad, a rotten banana in the bunch. So it's possible that they got into an altercation with this kid. Maybe they wanted to teach him a lesson. Maybe they thought... This is a smart-ass kid. I'm going to teach him a lesson. He's not going to get in my patrol car and start kicking and whatever whatever they say he may have done. And it's possible that they were just roughing him up and it got out of hand. I, I don't know, but that's a theory. I'm going to read a little bit more. This is from Cincinnati.com. Let's see what they have to say. This was posted in 2019. Search is renewed for a Kenton County boy who vanished in 1980. This was published June, 9, June 4th, 2019 by the writer Julia Furr from the Cincinnati Inquirer. A scent that could be decades old renewed the search for Randy Lee Sellers a Kenton County boy who vanished in 1980. Um, Sellards had attended the Kenton County Fire with some friends, and the Kenton County Police drove the boy part of the way home after he got drunk at the fire, but he never made it home. The decades that followed were filled with questions about what happened to Randy Sellers. A group of 37 criminology and forensic chemistry students from Towson University hoped to answer some of those questions. The students began surveying Kincaid Lake Park for signs that Sellers' body was there. They looked for pieces of thick denim, rusted sippers, metal eyelets that may have come off of work boots, that he was wearing that night. Associate Clinical Professor Dana Coleman said it was a needle in the haystack type of search. We're not looking for bones. We're not looking for a, a victim. We're looking for someone's son. The search was renewed in an investigation manner. A Kincaid Lake Park Ranger still had questions about the case and had time to review it during the slow winter season. That's when the ranger recruited the Kentucky K-9 Search and Rescue Team, nonprofit team, to survey the area. In March of 2018, the team's dogs picked up an alleged scent of a decaying human body, which paired with other information renewed the search for sellers. The area where the scent was found matched statements that serial killer Donald Evans gave in 1994. Evans produced a hand-drawn map to show police where he had buried 
the body, but no body was found when police followed up. The same map, oriented a different way, matched the scent, and Evan's statements were enough that they decided to renew the search in that area. The, the police department gave Coleman students permission to search the area after the nonprofit group recommended working with her. My hope is that they keep this compassionate peace in mind as she recounted their visit with Sellers' parents. The case will remain open and the search for Sellers will continue, said Kenton County Police Chief Spike Jones. He remembers growing up in Covington, Kentucky, and hearing about the case. He was a freshman in high school when Sellers went missing. They interviewed the parents, and they were just begging for help. They were asking, you know, can someone please help us? As I was reading about this family, I felt like I needed to share a little bit more about this family, about what happens to these people. We don't hear enough about the families and what they go through. And um, I wanted to share just a little bit from this one page. Surviving Parents Coalition. Um, tragedy again would befall Wanda and John. Those are the parents of Randy Sellers. When Randy disappeared, Wanda and John's other son, Tyron, was 13. Randy's disappearance completely devastated his life. Ten years after Randy's disappearance, Tyron committed suicide by jumping off of the bridge into the river where he thought his brother had drowned. It took four months to recover Tyron's body from the river. This is the Licking River, and um, but it took four months to recover his body, but they did recover his body. Is it possible, I, I sat and wondered, is it possible that Randy did return home that night? Did the police drop him off? Did he return home? Did he sneak into the home because he didn't want his parents to know what had happened? Is it possible that he snuck back out and planned to go back out that night? Maybe the younger brother knew more. I, I doubt it, but that's just a theory. Maybe one, he thought once the police leave, I can sneak back out and go hang out. Um, I don't know. He would have changed his boots because the boot prints that they found on the river bed were not those of his that he, were wire, that he was wearing that night. So I, that theory is just something that I was just thinking. But I doubt it. I, I doubt that he ever made it home. To go on to talk a little bit more about his mother, Wanda is one of the fir is Wanda is one of the first warrior parents in the crusade for missing children. About a year after Randy's disappearance, Wanda helped organize and put on the first conference for missing children in Covington, Kentucky. John Walsh, Robbie Calloway, and others. John Walsh, of course, who is from America's Most Wanted and Robbie Calloway met and went to Washington to start the fight for missing and exploited children. The fight led to the Missing Children Act that made a monumental step forward in the country's effort to find our children. Many other laws were soon put into act and eventually the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children came about. Wanda was also a founding member in Kentucky of the Exploited Children Help Organization, known as ECHO. She was trained to become a, a peer support specialist to help other parents and families of missing and exploited children. Um, she talked about how after her son disappeared, her and her husband couldn't get answers from anybody. They would sit by the phone waiting for police officers to return their calls, and they never did. They would call as many people as they could to try to reach out for help. So she got involved, and she, she said, I don't want this to happen to other parents. I want parents to know that they have somewhere to go, someone to talk to. And so I guess something positive did come from that. 
if you want to look at it that way. Circumstances, the subject was dropped off in the vicinity of his home after being escorted by two Kenton County police officers. He never arrived home and was never found. Now, that's a big red flag. He had gotten drunk and gotten into an argument or something of that nature at the fur. The police come along and break it up, and one of these police officers claims that Randy punched them or assaulted them in some way, and they take him home. Instead of taking him to his driveway, walking up to the door with this 17-year-old boy and saying to the parents, here's your son, he was causing trouble down at the fire and we had to remove him. Maybe you might want to sit him down and have a talk with him. They just supposedly set him out near his home. Um, that's a red flag, and I and, and not just I hope other I hope others of you see it as a red flag because I do. I mean, I I just you know maybe he maybe they they could argue that maybe we didn't want him to get into trouble. We, we just wanted to let him out. He was going to walk on home and calm down for the night. We didn't want to cause a big scene. I don't know about that, you know. Because if that was the case, instead of putting him in the patrol car to begin with, why didn't they just make him leave the fire grounds and say, go on your way now, don't come back inside. So to take the to go to the effort of putting him in the patrol car and were to transport him home, they should have taken him home. I don't know if they were reprimanded or if any, uh, you know, anything like that came of it or if they were investigated. Now, this is from Reddit. Now, Reddit, a lot of people on Reddit ask a lot of the same questions that I ask as kind of somewhat, conspiracy and somewhat uh, common sense, you know. But here, this is from Death Brings Pasta, okay. This is without a trace, a uh, sub on Reddit. This was posted two years ago. Did a cop get rid of Randy? This case comes from a city in Kentucky that does not actually exist anymore. Vassalia, Kentucky was an exceedingly small town. The city only had 111 residents. With that said, we can now get into the sad and strange disappearance of Randy Sellers. There was not much information online about Randy. Much of what I could find really just pertained to his disappearance. What I could piece together from this information was that in 1980, Kenton County Fire had come to the nearby town of Independence. Randy allegedly got into an altercation with another patron at the fire and was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct and public intoxication. Now, was he taken to the jail? Was he booked? If he was arrested at the age of 17, would he not have gone to jail and sat there until his parents were told to come and pick him up. That would be the normal thing that you would think. The officers on the scene seemingly believed that Randy was under the influence of drugs. He allegedly hit one of the officers after he was put into the car. The police went on to state that they had dropped Randy off roughly one mile from his family's home. Now details about why he was dropped off so far from his home seem to vary depending on who you ask. Some sources state he was unclear with the directions to his home. Um, this boy was 17. He lived in this small town. And while he may have gone over to the bigger town nearby to this fire, I think he knew how to get there from his house to the fire. So even under the influence of a little bit of alcohol, he may, have, and who's to say he was under the influence of drugs? If the police say that and they believed that, why was he not taken to the jail? 
um, if he was arrested for disorderly conduct and public intoxication, was he booked? Apparently not. Apparently, he wasn't really even arrested, if you look at it from the viewpoint of the law. Because if he had been arrested, it would have been called in or it would have been charted someplace, you know. Other people say he was dropped off somewhere else entirely. Regardless of those conflicting details, Randy never made it home and has never been heard from again. 